hello everyone in this video we are, we are going to see about the process pattern we all know that process is an activity by which the software is built and software is a collection of programs and a set of documentation in order to develop the software it, it requires a list of processes and a continuous task has to be done to develop a software process in order to build those process it has to follow some pattern so let us define the software process the software process can be defined as a collection of patterns that define a set of activities actions work tasks work products and or related behaviors required to develop the computer software and now the patterns can be defined at any level of abstraction actually what does it mean is the patterns can be in at any level in the sense that we can the develop any patterns whether it is in the low level or in the higher level but it is in the level of abstraction that means the whole details are not explained but only the components are mentioned that is called as abstraction in some cases per pattern might be used to describe a complete process for example a prototyping what is prototyping is creating a simulation model and in other situations pattern can be used to describe an important framework activity for example planning one part of the task and then or a task within the framework activity which is the project estimation so likewise actually what does it mean is the pattern can represent a continuous action or a part of the action or a single action so any for anything the patterns can be defined and now here let us uh, know how the template has been defined so amder has proposed the following template for the describing a process pattern so how we have to define the process pattern is first the name should be given so the that's the pattern name the pattern is given a meaningful name that describes the functions within the software process for example customer communication that means that is one process which is going to make the communication between the customer so in order to mention that the process we have a pattern called as a customer communication so it is like an identifier that identifies the process so always a name identifies the particular person or an object here the pattern name identifies the pattern by which the process is going to develop and now the intent what is the intent is the objective of the pattern is described briefly the intention for why we are why we need the pattern what is the necessity of the pattern so that is the objective of the pattern that is given by the intent for example the intent of the customer communication is to establish their collaborative relationship with the customer in an effort to define the project scope business requirement and other project constraints so that is the process by which the pro the software is going to really impart in the particular process that is the intent intent is the intention or the objective of the pattern what is the purpose of the pattern so likewise next we are having the so the intention of the project really helps to achieve the goal and then type what is the type of the pattern specified so ambler suggests three type of patterns as we have seen in the previously three types a task okay so a task is a software engineering action or work that is a part of the process and relevant to the successful software engineering practice for example requirements gathering so in order to develop a software we should first know what are the requirements that is needed to develop the project so to gather that we have to perform a task so that is one of the example of a task pattern and now the stage pattern when the this stage pattern represents a framework activity for the process what is the framework is framework cons consists of so many components like say when you have frame so frame is a collection of many components so here here the components are multiple work task a stage pattern incorporates multiple task pattern that are relevant to the stage for an example a stage pattern might be for communication okay so if that is the stage pattern is for communication this pattern will incorporate the requirements gathering because in order to gather the requirements for the software process it has to make a communication with the other peer group then only they can gather the information so in order to achieve those tasks of requirement gathering it has to come to the stage where it has to have a task pattern of how to gather the requirements so so many tasks of how to gather the requirements gathering that will 
form a stage pattern. And next one is the phase pattern. This defines the sequence of frameworks activities is iterative in nature. An example of a phase pattern might be a spiral model of prototyping. Actually, what is the phase pattern is? This is the hierarchical to say the phase consists of so many stages. The stage consists of so many tasks. So phase is the highest hierarchy. Here, this phase has continuous um, sequence of frame activities, framework activities that will help to achieve the goal. Here, the for example, given is then spiral model of prototyping. Actually, what is the spiral model of prototyping is, suppose if you are, want to develop a software model, one type of model is the prototype. Okay, so what they will do is, or the spiral model. Here, the a model is first developed and it is analyzed and it is discussed with the customer between the customer and the developer so they may come to some conclusion or they they just um, suggest some feedback on that from the feedback they will make some improvement so the work is a continuous process so that is the phase we say okay so so to summarize this uh, page actually this phase consists of so many stages the stages consists of so many tasks so so many tasks together form the stage and so many stage forms the phases and that phase pattern will decide the process pattern okay so now here let us uh, find out what is initial context initial context is whenever you are going to develop a software process initially what is the context what is the condition and what pattern we are going to apply and after that after applying that pattern how the initial context changes to the next level of the pattern so that is called as an initial context so here when we start the any process we shall ask what organizational team created the activities already occurred that have already occurred and then what is the entry state of the process so we are going to develop a process because any may join the process uh, activity at any time so when they join the process activity they may join in the middle or they may join in the initial process so when they anyone join the particular process they should know what is the initial context where they join the process activity and then they have to find out what phase pattern they have to, what software process pattern they have to apply in order to achieve the next level of the context so for that they need to know these answers for these questions about the initial context as well as the entry state of the process and then finally what software engineering information or the project in or the project information already exists so what is the information the already the project has based on information how we are going to go to the next level of project so this is also achieved by answering these questions so by analyzing these questions they are able to move from one stage to the other stage. So these are all the applications of a software process pattern and thanks for watching.